hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel um today we're gonna be making this packet hat it's called the oopsie daisy packet hat um it has some embroidered daisies on the hat and the inspiration was from um pinterest i'm also going to be showing you guys how to embroider the daisies on the hat in the last part of the video today we're gonna be using a 3.5 millimeter hook so let's get started so you just want to start by making uh, six single crochets into the magic ring. Yeah, so let me be joining it using a slip stitch. Then you're just going to chain one. And for the next row, you want to work two uh, single crochets into the same stitch all around. So when you get to the end of the row, you want to join using a slip stitch. Then you're going to chain one. Then you want to work two single crochets into the same stitch. And then work one single crochet into the next stitch. Then two single crochets into the same stitch and one single crochet into the next stitch and you're just going to be repeating that all around for this row. Once you get to the end you join with a slip stitch and so we're making this part of the hat and guys i learned a technique that you can use so that you don't so the hat doesn't have doesn't show like the increases you're making uh, within the rows and i'm going to be sharing that technique with you so as you can see from my the hat i had previously made you can't really see where i'm making the ingress increases as you normally would because i changed techniques a little bit so i'm going to be explaining that next so when you're done with that row, what you want to do is, because the previous row we started with by making an increase, for the next row, you want to start by making the single crochets and then you end with the increases. So for this row, you're going to start by making one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then you're going to work two single crochets into the same stitch. one single crochet into the next two stitches and then two single crochets into the same stitch and then you're going to be repeating that for this row till you get to the end of the row so when you get to the end we're going to join with a slip stitch Then chain one and because the previous row we started by making uh, one single crochet in the beginning now we're gonna make an increase so work two single crochets into the same stitch and then one single crochet into the next three stitches Again, work two single crochets into the same stitch and one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then you're just going to be repeating this for this row until you get to the end. So when you get to the end of the row, you want to join 
using a slip stitch chain one because the previous row we started with an increase this row we're gonna start with a single crochet only doing one single crochet into the stitch so you're gonna be working one single crochet into the next four stitches and then you're gonna make an increase that's two single crochets into the same stitch So that's what you're going to be doing for this row work one single crochet into the next four stitches then work two single crochets into the same stitch repeat that for that row and then we'll meet at the end so once you're done Again, we're going to be joining using the slip stitch. And as you can see, guys, you can see where I'm making the increases. Can't really see uh, where the increases are. And this is the such a helpful technique. And that's what you're going to be repeating. So for this row, we're going to be starting by making an increase. Since the previous row, we only worked one single crochet at the beginning. So two single crochets into the same stitch. And then you work five one single crochet into the next five stitches next you're gonna work an increase and then just walk one single crochet into the next five stitches and this is what if you haven't gotten it by now what basically is happening is for every row if for every alternate row you're gonna be starting with like an increase and every other alternate row you're starting with you're ending with an increase so for example if row one you made you started with an increase row two you end with an increase row three you start with an increase row four you end with an increase row five you start with an increase and then you end with an increase that's the whole uh, idea behind this technique So this time we're going to be starting by making one single crochet into the next six stitches. And then we make an increase. So you're just going to be repeating that. I'm going to leave a description for what you're going to do for the next rows because this is only going. This is just a demonstration. I'm not doing the whole hat uh, again. So I'll just leave a description for the instructions for the next rows that you need to do. For me, I'm going to be ending on this row. So I worked um, the heart to be to have a diameter of 5.5 um, inches. If you watched my previous tutorial, that's the same the same as what I did with my last bucket hat. So you want to work with the size that fits you. Uh, so you're gonna add the rows until you get to the desired um, width of the hat. So normally. I told you guys in my last video that um, you want to work and make it between 5.5 to 7 um, inches that's the normal size for an adult bucket hat and if you follow my last tutorial you'd 
I'd like to tell you that if you do make it 5.5, you um, the single crochet is a bit tighter than the, the double crochet. It's not as flexible or stretchy, so keep that in mind. So chain one. Now I'm gonna be working. Um, repeat and the round part of the hat where we're not making any increases and we're going to be working in the back loop only this will just give it a fold and make the hat fold inwards so back loop is on the other side of the v stitch This is always an optional procedure, you don't have to work in the back loop. I just do it so that it gives the hat a better fold. So you're just gonna work single crochets all around and you're going to be repeating that until you get to how the depth that you require for the hat. So for the bucket hat I did, I made mine, um, I made 14 rounds of single crochet. So that gave me a depth of about two inches. And that's about seven or eight uh, centimeters. So you can make it uh, the same as mine or you can add more rows to make it a uh, deeper or you can make less rows to make it less deep that all depends on your preference so after you're done working your rows of sing repeated rows of single crochet into each stitch you want to work on the flappy part of the hat and what i did with this hat is i worked into the front loop so this will just make the wider part bend more outwards so last time we're working the back loop this time we just want to work in the front loop but it's also optional you don't have to do this you can work through both v loops i just did it so that my hat would bend more on the outside until it will just define the hat better so I'm going to be working four single crochets, one single crochet into the next four stitches. So as you can see from my previous hat, it just made it bend more on the outer side. And I think it gave it some better definition than in, if I had worked in the waist. So working the back loop helps it bend inwards. Working in the front loop helps it bend outwards. So after working for single crochets, you want to make an increase. And that's what we're going to be doing for this row. You work four single crochets, one single crochet into the next four stitches, and then make an increase. So do that all around. And then I'm going to meet you at the end. So when you get to the end, you join with a slip stitch. 
and then now you're just going to be working one single crochet all around and repeating that for three rows So after you work your three rows, you're going to join the slip stitch, chain one, and then you're going to be working one single crochet into the next 10 stitches. So after 10, working one single crochet into 10 stitches, you make an increase and that's what you're going to be repeating for the rest of the row. So I did that and I repeated after 10 stitches, I did that for, I repeated that 7 times, did that 7 times without making an increase, then I'm going to be showing you guys how to embroider the daisies and for this you're going to need a needle and some white yarn then you want to decide what the where the center of the daisy will be so I left some spaces so I can show you guys how to work um, this daisy so you want to go back into the hole you just uh, came out of and then yarn over and then pull my width was about two stitches wide you can make yours longer then go back into the hole you just came out of then that's one leaf and you just want to go back into the same to the center of the daisy Then you're going to go back again into the center and then go onto the other side, yarn over, pull the yarn. Then back into the hole we just came out of, pull then that's two leaves of the daisy two petals you go back to the center and then you're just going to be repeating that i repeated that um eight times so you can just watch and see how i went about it So after I made eight petals for the daisy, what you what I did next was to cut off the yarn so I can finish off the 
daisy next we're going to be making the center of the daisy and for this you're going to need some yellow yarn and we're going to be using the french knot to make the center of the daisy so you want to pull your needle through the center of the daisy and once you get some yarn through the center you want to make sure you have enough through the center then you're going to secure the bottom string and then just wind it twice the one that's closest to the center you wind it twice and then go back into the center of the daisy and then pull down but you don't do it too fast you can just go slow and that's the french knot gives the daisy a really um, realistic appeal you can finish off by cutting the yarn so if you don't want um, the daisies to be seen at the bottom I recommend adding a cloth sealing a cloth layer around it at the bottom I might do that later so now I'm going to be repeating another daisy and you can watch so that you can better understand how to embroider it
so that's it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed i'm going to link a description for the video i learned how to embroider with in the description so be sure to check it out if you still haven't if the idea is still not clear with you and then thank you guys for watching be sure to comment like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video i'm going to be doing more videos so until next time guys bye bye